Hi everyone, welcome to episode two of Bite Size Jane Austen. And the title of this video is going to be Why Mrs. Norris is the best person in Mansfield Park. Jane Austen's Mansfield Park is a novel about horrible people. Everyone from the heroine Fanny to the love interest Edmund is a pretty awful person. But the person that is usually thought of as being the worst out of all of them is Mrs. Norris. I wholeheartedly disagree. And this is why. Mrs. Norris has a much wealthier sister than her, Lady Bertram. Lady Bertram literally does nothing all day long. She has children, but she doesn't care about educating them. She has servants, but she doesn't care about managing them. She just spends all day on the couch with her pug. Goals, seriously goals. I have nothing but respect for this woman. <laughs> But while Lady Bertram is having a nap, everyone else in Mansfield Park that she should be helping isn't getting that help, and in comes Mrs. Norris. Mrs. Norris is the widow of a much poorer man, she lives in a much smaller house, and she has a much lower status in society than her sister, and she's not happy about it. So when her sister gives up doing all of these fun, privileged things, like meeting high society people with her daughters, Mrs. Norris, very selflessly volunteers herself instead. And she has a great time doing it. Her, her nieces hate living in Mansfield Park and they want to meet men so that they can get married and get away from it as fast as possible. And Mrs. Norris facilitates this and lets them do whatever they want. What could possibly go wrong? Well, the oldest marries a very wealthy man, runs away with another one and gets uh, divorced. The youngest also runs away with another man. So Mrs. Norris, who had hoped to climb up the social ladder through her nieces and live an even more privileged lifestyle uh, thanks to them, has all her plans completely fall through. And what is interesting is that when this happens, everyone in Mansfield Park blames her for this. Not Lady Bertram, who was pretending her children didn't exist. Not Sir Thomas, their father, who is so horrible that his daughters are so terrified of him that they would actually meet, uh, they would actually marry the first man they meet just so that they can get away from him. And yes, Mrs. Norris has spent the entire book being awful to a lot of people, particularly our also not very nice heroine, Fanny. This is something for a different video. So we might not be totally devastated when she leaves Mansfield Park at the end of the novel. But what's interesting is that she doesn't go back to her house, but goes to live in the middle of nowhere. But this is someone who loved a high society lifestyle. Why would she do this? Well, it ended in Mrs. Norris resolving to quit Mansfield Park and devote herself to her unfortunate Mariah and in an establishment being formed for them in another country, remote and private, where shut up together with little society, on one side no affection, on the other no judgment, it may be reasonably supposed that their tempers became their mutual punishment. When Mariah runs off with a man other than her husband, her entire family turns their backs on her. They all declare her to be a terrible person and no one, not even her tyrannical father, takes any accountability for the way in which she was treated. They just simply won't risk a loss of reputation by being seen with Mariah, who is now a fallen woman, ever again. But guess who is? the person who spent the entire novel caring about this stuff more than anyone else. This is far from a happy ending. We are told on one side that there is no affection. This is Mariah. She doesn't really care about her aunt, but Mrs. Norris does care about her niece. And for her, she does something actually really selfless. She abandons the life she had and any ambitions for a higher position in society. She does it willingly too. Austin writes that she resolves to leave Mansfield Park, not that she gets kicked out. And before this, she tries to convince Sir Thomas to take Mariah in again when no one else does. So actually, the person we thought of as the villain of the novel does the most selfless and loving thing out of all of them. 
If you would like to find out more about this, you can order my book, Women and Property Ownership in Jane Austen. I'm going to leave the link for it below. And I will be releasing another one of these in February. So until then, stay well and keep reading.